The government want to introduce a ute tax where they essentially want to tax brand new utes to the tune of fifteen to twenty thousand dollars so something like a ford ranger or a hilux would set you back an extra fifteen to twenty thousand dollars more so we're going to dive right into this topic in uh today's shed episode and get to the bottom of it and more importantly find out what you guys think about it well cheers guys and welcome to another beers in the shed jesse cheers, mate welcome to the shed oh, you'll notice we're at the front of the shed again mate it's a bit of a mess in there mm. at the moment so it's gonna look good when it's done though it's it's getting there mate there's a few projects on the go mm. as always and uh it's good news that you're around actually you might be able to give us a, you know, a couple of those afterwards but Jesse if it's okay mate let's get straight into this hot topic it's mm -hmm. something that's got us fired up and no doubt when you hear about this if you haven't already heard about it, it's going to get you fired up as well because it affects all four-wheel drivers in mm -hmm. fact it basically affects anyone with a vehicle that's not an electric vehicle pretty much yeah because yep. that's exactly what the government want to do the long and short of it is they basically want to see more electric vehicles on the market therefore they want to tax every mm -hmm. other vehicle in this country that isn't EV. And of course, the bigger the vehicle, the bigger the tax. So in case you're thinking what sort of tax we're talking about here, it could be anywhere for like a Ford Ranger or a Hilux, some of the most common vehicles on the road, anywhere from what, what is it like? 12 to 12 to 18 grand and then 18, you go up to 000. a bigger more expensive car like a Land Cruiser that's around 20 to 25 grand depending on what model 25,000 so just just it's a quarter of the price of the car. And on extra, top again, yeah. Extra. I mean, that's absolutely ludicrous. We're not talking about a small tax here. That's mm. that that is the government trying to ban bigger vehicles mm. from the road, and Just that's making that's what they're trying them out to do. of reach from the everyday Aussie battler. Really, like, exactly right. There's there's a fellow in the, in the government called Chris Bowen. He's part of the Albo Brigade, and what he basically wants to see is in 2035 there are zero petrol or diesel mm. vehicles on the road in Canberra. In fact, that's what they're aiming for right yeah. now. And of course, that means that they're going to try and do that around Australia and basically make it so unaffordable to own a diesel or a petrol mm. vehicle that you've got no choice but to own an EV vehicle. Mm. Now, EV vehicles are fantastic and they yeah. suit a lot of people in the city, but are they for me? No. Mm. I think yeah. everyone in Australia, you know, it just doesn't really suit. It, it doesn't. And it's it's about emissions, why they want to change things. Australia is 1% of the emission problem. Worldwide. Yeah, worldwide. You go to China, which is, I think it's 20%. 30, so 30. 30. 30. They, 30. Th China are responsible for 30% of all emi emissions. Mm. Australia, 1%. 1%, yeah. These taxes are put in by, you know... There's a lot of advisors for the government, a lot of left-wing advisors that, look, it feels good to say we're going to get vehicles off the road, but they fail to realise Australia is a big country. We mm. rely upon doing big distances. And in fact, there's a lot of semi-trails and trucks on the, like Australia yeah. runs from trucks. That's exactly. how we get a lot of our freight supplies. Mm. And we're not ready to go straight into EV, and especially not over that short time frame. It's yeah. a matter of choice as well. You should be allowed to own the vehicle you want and not get taxed an amazing amount yeah. to do it. Yeah. You know, like you said, EVs are good for some people. We don't have a problem with them, but you shouldn't be pushed into something. You should have the choice whether you want to buy one or not. It's ridiculous, ridiculous legislation made by mm. governments that are just listening to the wrong side of the population. Yeah. They're looking looking at little minorities that might live in the city who just assume that because they don't need a, a, a big vehicle, mm. therefore everyone should be in the same boat. It doesn't quite work like yeah. that, and especially not in this country, in Australia. And like we said before, the science just isn't there to support it. I mm. mean, if we're trying to reduce emissions, and, and that's what the whole thing's about, mm. let's, ha let's have a look at like what happens with an EV vehicle. You don't just get EV vehicles, they don't just pop out, they get made from somewhere. Exactly. Yeah, another thing too is like the sustainability, that's what they're trying to work on as well. Uh, what's the second hand market an EV like? No one wants to there's buy not. one. There's, there's not. It. Exactly, look at Sooty behind us. What's this 30 plus years old, it's been rebuilt once, probably be rebuilt another time and it's good to go. But you're never gonna rebuild a EV car because you just, it's not, it's not affordable to do. And then recycling with lithium, what's, what, there's no how, plan how for that. How do you recycle lithium? Great question. Mm. I'll tell you now, it's not very environmentally friendly. The, the recycle, it goes into a hole and it gets covered up. Mm. That's the best solution we've got at the moment. Now, you, talk, you made a really good point about the second-hand market of EV vehicles. There is no second-hand market. And exactly. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you why. It's because the cost of the batteries, which is the, mm. the essence behind an electric vehicle, is so much. So yeah. if you go and buy a vehicle that's five years old, an electric vehicle, and you're going to be up for putting a new battery in it, you know how expensive a dual battery is in the back of your four-wheel drive is? Get a yeah. couple of lithiums in the back of Sooty here. Very, very expensive. You go and do it on a bigger scale and get a whole vehicle. Oh. Thanks, Mia. It's <laughs> scary. You have to remortgage the house. It's, it's about a twenty to twenty-five thousand dollar exercise, and that's why there's no second-hand market for these vehicles. Is because if you try and buy a ten-year-old 
EV vehicle or yeah. even a five-year-old one, you, the back of your mind, you're thinking, what if I need to replace the batteries? There's twenty to $30,000 expense. Yeah. To re so that, that's why the zero secondhand market. So these are almost treated like disposable vehicles, these EV. Mm. There, there, was a, there, was a, there was a car yard in the UK who refuses to sell secondhand uh, exactly, EV yeah. vehicles. And they do that because there's so many dramas with them and people don't want them. They're so mm. hard to resell because of this issue, because the people know they're going to be up for replacing the lithium batteries, yeah. which is a huge expense in these things. And so, there's, there's no green way to recycle these cars in lithium batteries. Like, absolutely. It's a big hole in the so, ground. That's the only solution they have at the moment. And that's not green at all. I guess what we're trying to say is the science behind it all, it's a feel good feeling for mm. a lot of people who don't know otherwise, but the science behind it, it's not greener. It's not a greener solution. So therefore, why are you taxing every Australian and trying to force them into a, an EV vehicle? I mm. think it's absolutely ridiculous. Mm. It's, it's, it hasn't been thought out and no. it's to win the hearts of a few left wing voters and yeah. that's it. We, we talk about emissions before, um, Australia is responsible for 1% yeah. of the world's emissions, right? China, 30%. Okay, let's try and keep everything in perspective and just look at it from a, a pure scientific point of view. Now, of that 1% that Australia is responsible for, how much is it from new vehicles, from mums and dads that, you know, hardworking Aussies that drive around on the streets yeah. here? We've got Apparently, things like big mines and then <laughs> you go into a city, everyone using all this power and stuff. I'm sure we can we can make th things more renewable, more green in other ways. In other ways that might actually contribute yeah. to less emissions. Exactly. Rather than taxing hard work and Aussies. And mm. I, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. It's now, quite sneaky to bring this tax it, on and with how big it is too. Exactly right. And you'll, you'll find that the governments are, are renowned for being sneaky. Now we're talking about, this is all this legislation has been trying to be put in by our minister for renewable energy. It's Chris Bowen. Now he's trying to do that. He's pushing it through the Albanese government at the moment, if you're into politics. Now I'm not into politics, but I know this government, you know, Albo has been around a long time. They're a left-wing government. What they want to see is no vehicles on the road. As simple as that, mm. but they're not thinking about Australia relies on vehicles. Mm. Ask, ask anyone, they're happy having like grocery services at their house. So they, yeah. everything comes via truck in this country. That's how Australia runs. Oh yeah, we can have EV trucks. It's not going to happen in the next Big 10 interstate years. trucks run 24-7. They just switch drivers. Like, you can't do that with a EV truck. It's got to be charged. It's got to be charged. Yeah. I oh, know. The science is not quite there. And look, I'd love to see less emissions myself, but it's not a practical way. And just taxing people to try and get them off mm. the road is not fair. And it's absolutely ridiculous. Not fueled on science. It's fueled purely on emotion. Now, we're currently going through something right now in Australia, whereby it's, on, it's in a different path, but it's the same mentality mm. in the sense that... Um, there was a blue groper, an iconic fish that was speared off Sydney. Now, these, these things are protected from spearing. You can't spear them. The guy has been caught and fined, but there was a lot of public outrage. Now, what's happened with that public outrage is all of a sudden, people now want to ban all fishing for the blue groper in New South Wales. Now, you, you're thinking, how does this make sense, Shorto, sure, compared to, you know, we're fighting against taxes of yeah, vehicles. Because of, of one event. Because of, of one event. Now, we're going to try and protect this fish based on zero science. Now, there's probably another 100 species of fish. At the moment, off the coast, there are huge trawlers just rounding up tiny bait fish mm. in, in plague proportions. There's, there's canneries on the water that are basically decimating populations uh, and changing the course of m migration with fish patterns, right? No one cares about that because they're not cute. And the thing is, what gets me is when zero science is used to try and, try and create legislation because it feels good, it's not actually helping anything. Mm. Now, this is the same thing I see happening in the four-wheel drive industry in the sense that we try and ban a track because a horse rider gets upset about a four-wheel drive going on there or some mm. guy who's in the city sipping his latte wants a four-wheel drive track closed because he's thinking, you shouldn't have, you're ruining the environment by trying to drive up a rock step. Couldn't be further from the truth. There's a lot of science that shows that actually four-wheel drives keep these tracks open. When it comes to a bushfire, there's more, you know, there's better management of the bush than just closing it down, put it that way. That's the science behind it. Yet, sometimes we let the heartstrings get in the way. So it's about time, I reckon, four-wheel drives need to stand up and actually have, a, have their say on this topic. Mm. And, and taxing vehicles and trying to get four-wheel drives off the road isn't the answer to controlling emission. So guys, let us know what you think below. Write it in the comments. We're very keen to see where you sit mm. on the fence of this topic. I, I know for sure that a lot of you guys are gonna be mm. outraged. I reckon we give them a little bit of incentive. We do a bit of a giveaway for probably five of the best comments. Oh yeah, what are you thinking? I've been using a bit of this Raptor lately. We'll give away five kits of this tinnable Raptor, four bottles with a Schultz for the, gun. For the best for comments. For the best five comments, we'll go I, through and I like check that them. Idea, so mate. Everyone's gonna be fired up. Make sure you know, put some passion in there. We'll go through and look. 
We'll give away a couple of Raptor kits. Far out. The whole kit. Mm. Sounds good Daddy to me, mate. Shed, though. That's yeah. all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, mate. What have we been up to recently? We've been up to a lot. I mean, mm. we've done some pretty cool trips that you guys will get to see very soon. We've got some cool stuff coming up. Um, now, Moab Part 2 came up mm. just recently, the last bit of the US um, adventure. Yep. A lot of you guys absolutely love that, mm. and for good reason as well. Yeah. Did that get you excited, mate? Yeah, I was I was up in the Brizzy office the other day when the boys were finishing the edit, and I saw a bit of it. It looks unreal. and um, It's, it's yeah. pretty wild. It's pretty wild stuff, mate. I mean, you know, it's just a whole different type of wheeling, and um, as you probably saw, uh, some of those rocks that we're driving yeah. up, and it's just And hills just of consequence. Like, in Australia, there's trees. You're on these... Massive rocks as big as a mountain, there's no trees. There's so zero trees, it's mate. Just, it's it, crazy. It was, uh, it was really cool. If you haven't seen the American series, make sure you jump onto YouTube and check mm. that one out because yeah. um, it was a, definitely a career highlight for me going to do that. Mm. And um, and speaking of the US, Jesse, now a lot of you guys loved it and a lot of you guys want to know when we're going to be back over. Mm. Now, I don't know if I should give this away just yet, but yeah. we uh, the Dirty 30 is still over in the US. Now, a lot of people think it might have come home already and it probably should have, but we left it over there for one good reason, and that is to go and wheel more tracks over there. We haven't even scratched the surface of the US. Mm. Now, you should be pretty excited. I am. Well, I'm super excited. <laughs> because Jesse's going to come. He hasn't been over there yet. We're going to take Jesse and drive some of the biggest uh, tracks we can mm. find in the US. And uh, there's a whole, like, the whole stack of stuff coming up soon. So that's all to look forward to, of course, in our channel, mm. mate. What have you been up to? I've uh, been pretty busy in the shed with um, a ZD30 guru called Taylor. He's uh, been down my shed. We've been working on the camera car, sort of making the ZD30 bulletproof. And giving it a bit more go for the camera boys. Hang on. ZD30 and Bulletproof. Mm. It's going to have a fair bit of go. It might even give Sooty a run for its money. Well, that wouldn't be hard, mate, yeah. let's face it. But, but I'd like to see that. that that's, um, and, you know, um, that's, that's been a very good, reliable little camera car, mm, that one. Definitely, yeah. And um, I think there's a lot of people always a bit hesitant with the ZD30s. Mm. Um, they always think they're hand grenades yeah. and all that sort of jazz. So you're going to tell me that we're going to fix all those yep. dramas. Yeah, the later model Comaro one's definitely the pick of the bunch. But yeah, we're going to make it. Go hard and be pretty bulletproof. But, That's um, the go. Also, speaking of YouTube, I watched your fishing shows the other day at Cape York. That looked like a sick trip. I'm, <laughs> I remember you telling me how quick you did it. You couldn't even tell you smashed the trip out that quick. We did it really quick. Have you guys Have you guys seen the latest fishing adventure that I did on YouTube? A lot of positive feedback, mate. Mm. In fact, so much so that I'm thinking of doing another one this yeah, year. That's cool. And, uh, yeah, let us know what you think. Where should I go again? Because it's going to be, let's face it, it's going to be pretty hard to top mm. that trip off. It was um, up in Cape York, that last one. Um, where should I go for the next fishing adventure? You might have to adventure? do like a Kimberley's one, because remember Ooh, you said the fishing was good over that way. It's pretty darn good, mate, mm. and pretty adventurous over there. Um, you know, I love doing it, mate, and I'll be doing more of that stuff. So that's all to look forward to on the YouTube channel. There's no doubt about it, mate. I think if it's okay with you, it's time for Deal of the Month. Mm. Deal of the Month, this is a time where everyone has a chance of saving, and we picked a good one for you guys for this week's Shed episode. Now, how about this one, mate? 20% off all Ultimate 9 mm. throttle controllers. That's a good saving, 20%. 20% Twen off, mate. Mm. That's that's more money to chuck at your rig. You'll probably need it with the, with the taxes going to be chucked on, <laughs> on these four-wheel drives pretty soon. So we're all about trying to save you guys money at fourwheeldrive247.com. And this one here, you can jump onto the website right now, pick up any of the EVC throttle controllers, and save 20% at the checkout. So this, this only runs for a limited time only, so make sure you get in quick and take advantage of that one. One of my favourite times, mate, it's where we dive out of our shed and into yours to see what you guys have been up to. We've got audience stories to get through. We've got some uh, rigs we want to check out. We've got some fails. We've even got some uh, entries from some young um, frothers, mate, who mm. have um, done some Lego builds and all sorts of cool stuff. And the really cool thing is we do have some prizes to give away. We've got some Forex merch packs. Exactly right. Mm. So this is where you get to show your rig, your fail to the rest of the world. And the best way to do that is when you uh, upload any pictures on Instagram, use the hashtags, full drive 24 seven rigs, fails, um, and that way we can actually know what you guys have been up mm. to, pick the right ones to put in the show, and you might even win a prize, mm. mate. So let's jump into the first one. Um, yeah, have a, This is pretty crazy. Have a go with this. This is from Roger, all the way from the UK, he's come over. They've gone across the Hay River track in the Simpson Desert with a troop of four mini mokes. Mini mokes. <laughs> Look at, his, look at his shirt too. Yeah. Two wheel drive, 24 seven, what a character. <laughs> what a character. I've never been, but I'm sure you've done that track. Is I, that, is that something pretty river. wild in a mug? I, I, you know, I don't want to take anything away from it. It's probably one of the easier ones, but in, in, the, in the Simpson desert, mm. but in a two wheel drive mini moke, yeah. let's not take away that. That's not much suspension travel on the meat. It'd be bumpy, I bet. You know, I complain about doing it in the farm truck, yeah. mate. These guys <laughs> in the mini mokes, Hats off to you guys. What an adventure, eh? Yeah, that's a trip they will not forget anytime soon. Absolutely. That's really, really cool. I love hearing stories like that. Now, he's come all the way from the UK yeah. to see the Simpson Desert, mate. That's, I think that's a really cool story. That is very own. cool. 
Now, a fail, mate. Now, <laughs> this is the bit where you, you have all the enthusiasm in the world, but you run out of yeah. uh, talent right at the last minute. Now, happens to the best of us. Yeah, unfortunately, down in the high country, um, the vehicles rolled and then it actually ran away. So it ran on oh, its own yeah, oil. All the smoke, yeah. yeah all it's the a, smoke. It's a patrol, I've, too. Oh, so it's done that a couple of times. It's um, very scary when that happens. Mm. And um, yeah. Uh, they still drive it 12 hours wow. back to Adelaide. So Good effort. I know, and you can expect that with an old rig. If they start, start to run on, you think it's engine done. Yeah. But, uh, not this one. The boys got lucky by the sounds of it. So that's no good. Never good to see a vehicle no. on its side, mate. That's a fail if I've ever seen one. What have we got here? A little, um, a camper trailer build from Jacob. That is pretty cool. Yeah, look He's at that. Went on a budget during COVID and made a camper. That. That is awesome. Just from and, scraps, he's yeah. had laying around. That's what I love about yeah, it. Yeah, the best part is it's so little and compact too. Like you get that most places, you get your full drive. That That is very cool. It is pretty cool when people go, the thing gets outside the box, that's a cool little building. And that would be a lot cheaper than buying one out of the shop, that's mm. for certain, mate. Definitely. Now, here's one from a little tacker called Oliver. Now, this bloke has just started mucking around with um, stop motion videos. Now, I don't even know what that is, but he's <laughs> Neither created a little video series with Lego. Now, I want you guys to check this out. So obviously the vehicle breaks down, it calls for the tow truck. Um, you know, the tow truck rocks up, drops the ramps down, and um, it's a full little, little yeah, full cool. blown recovery situation. You've done really well, Oliver. I love seeing stuff like that. I love when the kids get Very involved. Very creative. Oh, here we go, <laughs> another foul. Poor old Greg Camion has put his, uh, what is it? Mitsubishi Challenger it's on its side. It's a Challenger. Yeah. Now, find a Challenger, I'll probably chuck it on its side too, oh, mate. Oh, <laughs> he come around a corner, wasn't even being silly. Noticed a tree in the inside of the track and uh, uh, hit it, hit a bump. And he's oh. travelling at low speed and it's still going yeah. over. These things do happen, mate, when you're, you're mm. out in the bush, one minute it's all going well, yeah. the next minute you're on your side and you're good thinking... Good news is, it doesn't look like there's too much damage. A couple of mates push that back on its wheels and he's good to go. Even, mate, even if you did ride the Challenger off, there's about 40 bucks worth of damage in one of those. <laughs> no, you can't say, oh, look, look. Oh. they're basically a Pajero, those they things. Are, they're, yeah. they're, they're a cool rig. Underrated. Cool rig. Now, speaking of cool rigs, mate, here's one from that Dan Churchill. Cool. Now. You know what, I'm going to be honest with you, since doing the trips in the US, I've got a newfound appreciation for Jeeps. Yeah. You know, and this one here, look at it, it's it's built it's built up for touring, not just hardcore tracks mm. as well, and um, long time viewer, first time call, that sort of jazz. Um, <laughs> yep, he, again, he agrees with the, the, the negative stigma on the Jeep, so he's yeah. probably been a bit quiet to send us the photos in, and he probably saw the US trips and thought, yeah. you know what, I'm going to risk it by setting he's a photo in. Spot. Um, it's cool. So big shout out to Dan and um, the full Jeep community. Mm. He's saying there's a big, there's a big um, Jeep southeast Queensland there community. Is. I always see a lot of them when I go up glass and the glassy. Weekend. Yeah, and heaps of them. Do they drive the tracks all right? A, a couple of them, yeah. Really, <laughs> you've really got to be on your A game to out drive them. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah they, they are super. It's cool super to see cool. them getting used too. Yeah, it is really cool, mate. And um, that's a really cool little wrangler. That one. Look at it. Oh, here we go. Here's one from the kids. I used to draw pictures like this when I was little. I thought it was from you for a second, mate. <laughs> no, he's actually drawing Graham's D-Max here. Look at that. He's got the Mitz canopy on the back, snorkel and everything. That is awesome. That is and pretty cool. And he's been cool. making Lego cars forever. I used to do that too. <laughs> it's good on your chest out. That is awesome. That's the thing. That's the thing, Chester. You'll be, you'll be drawing pics one day, building with Lego the next, and before you know it, you're going to have a disgusting four-wheel drive hmm. obsession like we do. <laughs> Leaking and... oil in your dad's driveway. <laughs> exactly right. Um, He's another fail, mate. This one's yeah. look look how quickly this one's gone wrong. We've actually yeah, driven this one. I was gonna one. say this track looks very familiar, yeah. yeah this is um what's this one? Over near Pyman Heads. This is Pyman Heads. Tassie, I think, it yeah. is Pyman Heads. You can tell it's a Tassie track with that yeah. it's got that sort of shaley sort mm. of look about it. And you can see he's just gone over, there's a big hole, he's fallen in. Mm. And, Good um, save by the looks of Amazing save. Yeah. How that didn't go tumble tumble all the way yeah. to the bottom of the hill, I'll never know. I wonder what his um, undies look like. Oh that's <laughs> that's pretty full on, Jason. Well well saved, mate. And I love the fact they've got the videos to, yeah. to, to back it up as well. Usually when you do something crazy, you try and tell your mates how wild it was. Yeah. They say, yeah, cool they story, mate. Yeah, yeah, talking crap. You've actually got the, the video to prove it. Oh, this is pretty nice. Troopy. I love how they've got the inbuilt rooftop tent. That would make life so much easier, it's I reckon. gorgeous, Troopy, that and one. And that stripe up the side. That's becoming like old retro decals is becoming a thing, but I like it when it's done right. Corey, that is a sensational mm. build, mate. That is... One of the one of the nicer troopies I've probably That'll seen make in a long so time. So easy. It's not over the top. No, it's just some tasteful mods. And if you look closely, he's mates with a person who's got a sixty series. Ah, oh, so he's got clever S clever mates around him. Exactly. Well, I don't know if you guys can probably can't. There's a little <laughs> sixty series sitting down the side, twelve HT. There's twelve you know, everywhere here. I, I know I'm a big fan of sixties, mate. But um, that's a couple of cool retro rigs. Looks cool. Hey, look at little Ben, Ben Crosby. Now he's based in the UK, but still a massive fan of the show. Mm, that's now, cool from the UK. Yeah, wow. check, check out, check out little Albert. He's made himself 
I think what is a dirty 30, mate. Yeah, it's the right colour, isn't it? It looks towing like a, towing a camper or something, yeah, maybe. Yeah, look at that. And there's, it looks like myself and the one with the grey hair is probably Graham. That one it? holding the beer is definitely you. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about it. And uh, look, it's a great job. I love seeing that. And there's a tough bit, mate. We've got to pick two winners out of that mobs mm. of fails, rigs, um, builds, Lego yeah. builds. Now we've got two Forex merch packs to give away. And of course, the kids' prizes. Mm. We'll, give, we'll give a kids' prize away. $100 snatch vouchers. They can jump online. That and, is awesome. They'll love that. Exactly. Exactly right, yeah. they can kit themselves up, they're the coolest mm. kid in school, mate. Yeah. Um, so go first, mate, the 4X merch pack. I reckon I'm gonna pick uh, the bloke that made that DIY camper trail. That is sick, a little COVID project, bits and pieces he had laying around, that's something I'd do. Yeah. And I love how compact it is, make camping easy. So yeah, I reckon he deserves cool. a merch pack for sure. That's cool, that's cool. Um, all right, for me, I'm gonna go for, I think Jason Miller with that save at Pyman Heads. Yeah, that was a very good save. It was, it was great, nearly mm. rolled on his side, managed to pull it over and uh, yeah. I'm going to give you a 4X merch pack. Now, mate, we'll give away a $100 snatch voucher to one of the kiddos. Um, I love seeing, like I, I've yeah. said this a million times, but I love seeing the kids that are obsessed with the show. Mm. And um, I really encourage any of the kids out there, send in what you've got. And parents, if you're listening, um, I'd, love, I'd love to see a lot more um, Lego builds. Yeah, I'd love involved. to see. I used to draw pictures and make Lego when I was little. Draw so pictures. Send it and in. Um, speaking of drawing pictures, mate, let's give the prize away to um, the little picture we got of Graham's yeah, D-Max. That was a good drawing, yeah, definitely, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. He's gonna froth that voucher. He's yep. gonna be happy as Larry. So Chester, if you're, if you're watching mate, $100 snatch mm. voucher is going your way. That's cool mate, there's been some cool rigs, cool fails, and mm. um, and I love obviously seeing what the kids have been up to. Yeah, that's cool to involve them I reckon, definitely. Yeah, make sure you guys get your entries in. Now the best way to do that is make sure you're connected to all of our socials. So mm. we've got a Facebook page, yep. Instagram, and of course a TikTok. Mm. And if you use the hashtag full drive 24 seven fails, fails yep. or rigs, or, rigs yeah. um, or kids, you'll be able to um, basically let us know what you guys have been up to and hopefully you too can win an awesome prize. Well, mate, that just about wraps us up yeah. for this one, mate. I want to say a big cheers. Yeah, it's always cheers. good to hang out when you're on the Definitely, shed. Definitely, yeah. And, Thanks and, for having me over. And don't don't think you're getting away that easy, mate. <laughs> Those tools aren't just for show. We've got, we've got a little bit of work to do in a I'll second. I believe that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to uh, finish off by saying there's a, a lot of big things coming up mm, for, the, for the channel. Now, what are you going to be up to, mate? Uh, I got the Brizzy Full Drive Show coming up. Oh with yeah, Graham. me and Graham there. That's, a, that's so. Um, you know, this will be the first full wheel drive show I've missed in Brisbane for as many years as I can really? remember. Yeah, I'm going to be in the states. At least you got a good excuse. I'm yeah. going to be in the states, wheeling mm. the dirty thirty over there. So you get mm. to see uh, more cool American content coming up. But plus we've got Tasmania part two. Mm. So I was jealous I wasn't on that trip. That looked awesome. You did thousand dollar track. That we looked did a thousand cool. dollar track in a twenty four hour challenge. Um, that's you guys have seen that one. But after that we go straight into a little bit more touring style, but then when you think it's touring, guess what? You yeah. get really stuck in Tassie That's mud. That's Tassie for you, isn't it? Yeah. I also went diving. I did one of the best cook-ups ever. I, I went yeah. diving in Tasmania and got abalone off the rocks. I uh, managed to track down a couple of crayfish. Yeah. Um, cook up for the ages, mate. And yeah. in one of the most scenic places in the, in the country. Sounds so like one to watch. You guys will get to all see that soon. Make sure you do us a favor, like and subscribe to the channel and uh, we'll see you out in the tracks, hopefully. Cheers. Cheers.